What's up guys, Logs here, and it's day nine of quarantine. Hope you guys are having a fun quarantine. Um, I thought this is a perfect time to show off my gun arsenal, just all the guns I own. Um, just because, you know, the, the apocalypse is on us at this point, you know, all the toilet paper's gone. I might as well show off what I have and show that you show you that I'm ready for the apocalypse. So those who've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I used to have a big gun wall in the background at my parents' house when I lived there. And uh, people always ask me if the guns were real and you know, do I ever shoot them and just different questions. So I figured I'd make a whole video about them and how many guns I own, are they real, all that stuff. I've been planning to do this video forever, but I've never actually just got around to it. So this is just gonna be all about my guns from start to finish and a little history on them. Before we get started, I just wanna say I'm not gonna be testing these guns out and dry firing like Sor Carl. I know he did that in his uh, in his house, but I'm not gonna be doing that just as a safety precaution. God damn. I live in the United States and the state that I live in allows us to own firearms of pretty much any size uh, unless it's fully automatic and then you have, you can still own that, you just have to get a license for it, but they're all legal and they're legal for me to have. All right, starting off with the first gun I ever owned. This was back when I was, you know, pretty young. I think it was like 15, 16 and my grandfather gave me this. It is a Winchester 22 short rifle. It shoots 22 short, which I don't think they make anymore, but it's a one bullet rifle. You just put one bullet in there and you're ready to go. Um, but like I said, this is so old, they don't actually make 22 short anymore. Or if they do, I've never been able to find it. So this is my first gun I ever owned. Before I go any further, I do wanna say I own 15 guns overall. All right, now I'm gonna go from smallest caliber to biggest. I'm starting with a 22 handgun. This is a Heritage 22. It's a single action revolver. You cock it back and you pull the trigger and it shoots. Um, but you just load one at a time. It's kind of like, you know, Red Dead Redemption kind of deal, but this is only a 22 caliber. You're not gonna kill many people with this. Moving up is the Baby Glock. This is the Glock 42. It shoots a 380, which is just a little bit smaller than the nine millimeter. Um, but yeah, it's a Glock 42. Pretty much all my handguns are Glock, you're gonna see, but uh, I just love Glock. They're very durable. Like I said, this is the smallest one they make and I just use this to conceal, you know. I could put it in like my freaking, pocket or something and just zip it up and go to the movies or something. I really just, it's just, that's the only thing it's good for is just concealment. Next is my Glock 19 Gen 5. I just bought this in 2018, I think. Um, but this is the Gen 5. This is the mid-size Glock. It fits well with most people's hands and a lot of people like it just cause it's, you know, that sturdiness. And like I said, these are so durable. Like they're really good guns. Um, some people are, you know, they kind of turn away because of the look of them. They're kind of squarish, but I really like them and I love the good guns. Next up is the first handgun I have ever owned. And this one is a Glock 17. This is a full size 17. This is what uh, I use on uh, patrol when I work. It's a full size Glock. It fits well with my hands because I have big hands. And I got the little uh, desert tan uh, camo. This is the first one I ever bought. I think it was like 2015 maybe or something like that. But uh, I definitely love this. And if, you know, 17 rounds isn't enough, I can throw in 32 round magazine. And that, I mean, that just, that just annihilates people. Speaking of the Glock, this is my duty gun, my duty weapon. This is the one I use on duty. Uh, this is the Glock 17 full size. It's the same as the last one, but I have put a uh, tack light on it so I can see in the light and the dark and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, this is it. Moving on to my rifles and shotguns. I have two shotguns, which I'll show you first. I take that back. I have three shotguns. I forgot about one of them. This is my home defense uh, Mossberg. Um, it's just like a tactical shotgun. It's kind of got the sawed off barrel. Um, this is just a normal, you know, 12 gauge shotgun. Uh, nothing too special about this. You can buy them at like sporting goods stores for around $200, $300. And if that shotgun doesn't work in a home defense situation where someone's breaking in, I'm sure this one will. This is an actual sawed off shotgun. Uh, this is something you'd see in like a zombie apocalypse movie. This is a 12 gauge. I've shot it twice but I am afraid to shoot it again just because the stock, I had a tape because it's, it's literally cracking. Um, I bought this for $87 at a gun show. That's right, 87. Um, this is a Stevens uh, sawed off model 77 shotgun. 
So like I said, this is perfect for a zombie apocalypse. All right, for my last shotgun, we're moved into the World War II weapons. This is a Model 97 Winchester trench gun. So this is in all the video games, this is in all the games, but uh, this, this is a Model 97 trench gun. It's got a hammer on the shotgun, which you never see before because literally people started making these without hammers just because it was such, so there's such a weird concept, but uh, basically cock it back, the hammer goes back, and then you pull the trigger and it goes forward. I got the heat shield on it. Basically that protects from the barrel getting really hot and you're burning your hand, that's what that's for. It also has a bayonet mount, so I can stick a bayonet on the end of this and use it. Um, but I don't own a bayonet, but I have one for a rifle that I'm gonna show you, but I don't have one for this. So this is actually one of two um, slam fire shotguns that they made um, throughout the years. So basically slam fire means if you hold the trigger, when you cock this back and push it forward, it will fire, um, which is crazy, but they stopped making them just because they're so freaking dangerous. But yeah, this is the Winchester Model 97 trench gun and uh, I love it. All right, moving on to my World War II rifles. This is the first one I ever got from my collection, and since I got it, I just continued getting them, just adding to my collection. But this is the Russian Mosin Nagant. I know all of you have seen these in video games. They are everywhere. Um, even at gun stores, you used to buy these for literally $90 at a gun store. And that's how much I bought this one. It is a matching bolt and barrel, which I'll get to in a second what that means. Um, but yeah, I bought this. Oh, well, it was actually given to me as a Christmas gift a long time ago, um, but yeah, it was uh, it was only ninety dollars, and they sh they had them in crates. So basically, in the war, they had all these unused rifles, and they pretty much just threw them in crates and kept them there. But this is a uh, authentic Russian Mosin Nagant. Before I go any further, I do want to say all of my rifles are authentic. They were all in World War II. Um, I don't know if they were actually used or what, but they're all genuine rifles. They're not reproductions or you know retro rifles or anything like that. On to my next one. This is the Polish M44 Mosin with a bayonet attached to it. So yes, this is the Mosin Nagant, but it's cut down, obviously, the barrel shorter. Um, this was Polish made matching bolt and um, barrel and and I honestly love this gun It's probably out of the two. I think I like the original the other one more But this one was just sweet. I had to buy it when I first saw it But yeah, this is the m44 and I wish they would bring it into video games more I've never seen a good one of these in a video game. They only have the full-size Mosin. Next on the list is probably the most historic rifle out of all these that has actually seen action. And this is the German Car 98, K98, K, whatever you want to call it. It's in all the games, all the video games, but this is the German rifle. It has 14 Nazi swastika stamps on it. Um, so what that means is they're stamped into the metal and the wood, basically the Nazi emblem. It's kind of banged up, it's got nicks and scrapes here and there, but this is an actual World War II Car 98 that was used. It does not have a matching bolt and barrel, and what that means is basically this bolt comes out. Back when World War II ended and all the uh, Nazis were captured and you know all the guns were taken, they would actually take apart these guns, they would take the bolts out and throw them in a pile and they would throw the rifles in another pile just so they couldn't be used. And they were doing this for all the German K98s, so to find an authentic one with a matching bolt and a barrel is pretty hard. It's pretty awesome though, um, but they do run you a lot more expensive. And that's essentially because, you know, like I said, they would take these bolts and they would throw them and then they would take the rifles and throw them. So if someone was to collect them and like find the original matching bolt with the barrel, it's pretty rare. So it's really cool if you find one. This ran me $900. It's the most expensive rifle I bought for this World War II era, um, but it's definitely one of my favorites. Next on the list is the British Lee Enfield. This is the number four Mark I. 
Um, so they have all these different, you know, ones. They served in World War One with the British and World War Two, um, but this is the number four Mark One. To this day, this is the fastest shooting bolt action in history. Literally, you had guys who used to shoot it with their middle finger and then do the bolt back because it was just you could do the bolt so fast and it was crazy. I've seen videos of people doing the bolts like. 15 shots in like 10 seconds, it's crazy. Last but not least, this is my favorite gun I own, and of course it's American, <laughs> but this is the M1 Garand, or Garand, depending on how you pronounce it. It was modeled, uh, it was made after the great John Garand who created this. And it's a semi-automatic gas-powered rifle. You pull it, pull it back, you have eight clips and a stripper clip, and then you just put it down and it goes forward. Obviously, you guys have seen it in all the video games. It's nothing new. I've shown videos of me shooting this before. Um, I love to shoot it. Every chance I get, I love to shoot it. It shoots uh, three, uh, or 30-06. She's 30 out six and it has the original sling. I got this online for about $800. Um, love the uh, chestnut stock on it, it's really nice. This one is a Springfield Armory made. Um, so basically back in World War II, when US went to join the war, they had to make all these rifles. But like I said, this is my favorite rifle and the favorite gun that I do own. Um, I love shooting it and uh, man, you just can't beat American machinery. Yeah guys, that was it. You can kind of see the trend. I like to collect World War II rifles and guns, and I also have home defense stuff with my Glocks and stuff like that. But um, I love I love guns, and I wish people would get more of an understanding on what they are, and they're a tool. They're not just something you know that causes mass shootings and shit. It's the person using it. So if you could tell, I have a rifle from every faction in the war except for Japan and like maybe a couple others. Um, but the next on the list is an Arisaka Type 99 or whatever I can find. It's just a rifle from the Japanese. I've seen a bunch of them, but I just never bought one at a show or anything like that. So we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, this is my video on all my guns. I don't have a big gun wall. I don't have room for it. Um, so I just keep them in the closet right now. But don't think about coming and taking them, guys. The guns are probably my third form of defense in my home. Uh, first being the alarm, second being my 150 pound Rottweiler, and third being my firearms. But yeah, man, that's it. That's my video. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, I am getting a, a custom built rifle, uh, AR-15 for when I'm on duty. I'll show you a picture of it. Um, that's just the base model. It's not actually, it's not, that has nothing on it. I'm gonna have a sight on it, a sling, uh, extra mags, a uh, flashlight. You know, I'm gonna put a lot more stuff on it, but that's just the base rifle. Um, so that's being built right now. I just, just thought I'd share that with you. Yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. If you want more videos on guns, maybe like history or just shooting, uh, be sure to let me know and I will see you guys later. Deuces.